mulțumim uh, briefly for our guests who don't speak uh, Romanian. Uh, Mr. State Secretary um, stressed the fact that although the Department for Inter-Ethnic Relations has not as uh, an objective uh, looking into the diasporas, uh, however, since Romania has more than 10% of its population represented by ethnic minorities, um, they think that it is only normal to support this sort of event like the one we have uh, today. Um, and actually what you did, Mr. State Secretary, you, you, you took something from, from my presentation in which I was trying to define uh, what a diaspora is. Uh, people spread around the world uh, uh, who live in, in other countries but who also maintain uh, community uh, connections and uh, um, uh, linkages with their home uh, and kin um, uh, states. Um, the members of a diaspora are continuously being a, a minority and this is one of their struggles to, um, uh, to maintain a common um, um, identity. And identity is one of the concepts that actually, as you can see in the title uh, of this uh, event, uh, we're going to discuss um, uh, today. Um, Mr. State Secretary stresses exactly these facts because um, these issues are, uh, are connected and they're convinced that what we're going to cover today are going also to uh, bring uh, uh, the, um, uh, um, some uh, new issues in uh, promoting identity and uh, national heritage. Thank you very much, Mr. State Secretary. Um, this being said, um, I will uh, pass uh, uh, the microphone to His Excellency Mr. Ashok Gregorian, who is the uh, Minister Plenipotentiary uh, for uh, Armenia in, uh, in Romania. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, dear participants of this conference, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to be here today among you at this remarkable academic get-together of experts on diaspora issues, and I also wish to thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me the floor. Hence, taking this opportunity, let me welcome, on behalf of the Armenian Embassy and the Investor, the participants of this important forum, and wish them productive deliberations. This is also an ample opportunity to come up with very brief, maybe somewhat sporadic remarks related to the complex and, in fact, rather subtle issue uh, of diaspora identities, uh, thus sharing uh, with you some of my views and ideas and questions on the subject. The questions that surface with regard to today's subject matter may be even more important than the views and ideas, because they already uh, contain or imply some kind of answers, whereas the questions still wait uh, for being unfolded and duly addressed. The title of our conference obviously needs some kind of extension, like uh, in the changing world, or in the rapidly changing world, or in the rapidly changing world in the era of globalization, or, or the like. Even if these phrases are already worn out or shabby because of extensive overusage and misusage sometimes, they still carry out important semiotics. Indeed, if one casts a glance at the political map of the modern world, one would see, to put it in an oversimplified way, colors and lines. Those colors indicating the countries of the world and those lines denoting their boundaries. What one would not see, for sure, uh, are the diasporas existing in those countries as they are not marked or indicating, indicated with either colors or lines. However, from one point uh, of view or from one specific angle, uh, which has the right, as I believe, to exist, uh, the modern world consists of countries or states and diasporas within those countries thus providing an unbelievably amazing mosaic of societies or societal entity, entities living and coexisting side by side, one with another, and one within the other. And this is, if you wish, the unavoidable reality of our rapidly changing world in the era of 
globalization. The majority of homelands seem to have diasporas. A unique exception is perhaps the US, uh, which does not have diasporas, at least in the classical sense of the word, but which is home to dozens of diasporas, including, of course, the one million strong Armenian diaspora. Russia, France, Great Britain, and many other countries are also homes for numerous diasporas, which sometimes happily coexist and cooperate. In some cases, they can be also hostile, based on cultural and religious differences. As numerous countries and nations of the world do have diasporas, which are not to be confused with migrant communities, it is com commonplace nowadays to meet people from every walk of life who consider themselves experts on diaspora. And very often, ironically and yet by default, they are, because they are either part of the diasporan community or part of a homeland with strong ties with that diasporan community. Henceforth, their knowledge of diaspora is direct, personal, first-hand, and rather thorough. Yet their experiences, being very precious indeed, their knowledge should not be and cannot be qualified as expert knowledge, as the latter implies systemic scientific research through and uh, thorough and comparative analysis. Only through such analysis we would obtain the contemporarily, newly evaluated, all-embracing picture of the world diasporas and their historic, political, religious, cultural and economic roles throughout history and uh, in our days. So, addressing this distinguished audience, comprised of well-known representatives of academic and expert circles, I would like to ask, isn't it high time to embark on a project to produce a fundamental academic research work uh, on world diasporas, even though tons of literature have been already created? I know at least a couple of uh, successful attempts, one of them being the Encyclopedia of Diasporas, uh, immigrant and refugee cultures around the world, issued some 10 years ago by the Yale University and consisting of two volumes, Overviews and Topics and Diaspora Communities. It's also worth creating the updated map of world diasporas. Such work would enable us to come up Taking, uh, to come up, uh, taking into consideration the new realities around us with uh, really inno innovative academic approaches and evaluations of a complex phenomenon called diaspora and perhaps produce fresh analysis of modern yet rapidly changing national and ethnic identities existing, existent and evolving in diasporas. While temporarily serving as a diplomat in Bucharest, I am part of my homeland and still part of diaspora communities in Romania, Russia, USA, Argentina, France, Canada, and elsewhere, where I have close or distant relatives, friends, and acquaintances of the same Armenian roots and origin, same ancestry, same blood, same bone marrow, so to speak. We Armenians love and cherish our compatriots uh, in the worldwide communities to the extent that I dare say we love them to the marrow of our bones. Because we have very strong interconnections and we have shared the same destiny. Therefore, given this far stretched geography, which is far from being uh, the case of my personal experience only, we can speak not only of national but also transnational identities. On the other hand, proceeding from the meta, uh, metamorphic and chaotic transformations occurring throughout centuries with traditional diasporas, continual outflows and inflows, and a host of multifaceted and multi-layered factors and influences, it would also be wise to speak of at least dual, if not multiple, ethnic and national identities. Identities that alter changing the archetypal diaspora, diasporas and their uh, cliché uh, perceptions and producing amalgamated new 
entities and new identities. In the age of Skype, being in diaspora no longer means permanent disconnections, inaccessibility and alienation from the memories and experiences of homeland. However, does that imply that today diaspora means a mere extension of the homeland? What is the real relationship and mode of interconnection between homelands and diasporas? I do not have ready-made answers to these questions. Cases are different, and I'd rather leave it to the experts. Some general conclusions can be therefore derived from case studies. Uh, while uh, the uh, diasporas of India and China, for instance, are considered to be the largest in the world, the Armenian diaspora seems to be one of the oldest. Uh, because uh, as early as in 387, when uh, the first division of Armenia took place between Persia and Byzantium, the first waves of immigration hit our nation. Another wave came in the Middle Ages, and, and the third major wave after the, uh, the, Arme the genocide of Armenians in Ottoman Turkey in 1915. Does this mean that Armenians of the diaspora, who currently live in more than 60 countries of the world, have at least two sources of identities, based on their experiences in host countries and collective memories of homeland? Sometimes generations of Armenians have found refuge in a third transit country uh, on their long journey between homeland and the host country. How does this affect their national identities? In this region, for instance, Armenians appeared very early and starting from the 12th century, they had significant presence in Moldova, Ukraine, Transylvania and adjacent areas. They largely contributed to the societal and political developments in Romania, erecting churches and castles, and starting from uh, 1401, they established a diocese here. The input of Armenians here in Romania is well known. I will not elaborate on that. Dozens of names in various fields of activity, societal life and public space, speak, speak for me. I will, uh, and those areas uh, cover literature, arts, sciences, architecture, it suffices to say that this very building that hosts our conference yeah, has been, uh, was built uh, exactly. by an That's exactly architect. what I was going to say, yeah, this is what we were discussing last night. Yeah. In these regions, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we have, we have also uh, to bear in mind that there are around 10 million Armenians around the world and only 3 million a million of them currently live in Armenia, resulting in a unique situation when the Armenian diaspora is much larger than the homeland. The diaspora is also not monolithic. There are two million Armenians in Russia, more than one million in North America, uh, and vast, uh, strong communities elsewhere, in Europe and, and South America, let's say. The experiences, capacities, and expectations of these groups are very different. Hence, are they the same or not? Can they equally interact with their homeland? The impact of all this on the Armenian diaspora relationship is therefore, is therefore multi-layered and uh, the identities are, as I said, multiple. Another characteristic feature of the Armenian diaspora is that it is highly structured and institutionalized. For centuries, our communities have been forced to uh, regulate their social and cultural life and as a result, churches, organizations, political parties have, been, ha have a long tradition of community self-governance. They have also a high level of participation in the political and cultural life of the, high, uh, of the host countries. The challenge for homeland, homelands is uh, hence how to increase and transform such high impact participation into a mutually uh, beneficial cooperation. Helping the homeland in the humanitarian sphere is comparatively easy. The challenge is to find ways to use diaspora networks and know-how to bring about a lasting cooperation and utilize the lobbying, institutional, economic 
and other capacities, capacities of diaspora communities to the benefit of homeland and the di diaspora communities themselves. One thing is clear, diaspora, diasporas constitute an important part of the world historic and cultural heritage, and therefore they should be preserved and taken care of. We should also prevent diasporas from dying out, which will be a great loss. There is, for instance, no Armenian community now in China, uh, and yet we remember times when uh, Armenians were the first to translate the Bible into Chinese. Today, uh, we witness huge inflows of refugees from Syria and elsewhere, from Middle East into European countries. I would like to learn about expert opinions regarding their future. Will they form new communities or merge into existing ones? What are the demographic, security and other aspects? Anyway, if I speak for another hour or two, I will not be able to exhaust all issues related to diaspora homeland interrelations or identity characteristics. I only maybe succeed in exhausting your patience, which is the least of all my intentions. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to round up and once again wish you successful work and fruitful outcome. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Mr. Dilanian. <clears throat> Actually, I was thinking during your presentation, I was remembering um, a few months ago when together with Andrea Tanase and with Nicola Tabitian, we were starting to pull together uh, this program uh, that uh, starting from the Armenian diaspora, we were also focusing on other diasporas, the Jewish one, and we're going to have presentations today about this and also about the Greek one. And uh, we go back even to the 18th century to see how the Greek uh, diaspora was formed in uh, in Romania, and we have something very very special regarding the Assyrians in Europe. About not much is known, unfortunately. Uh, so I think that uh, we will manage to round up quite a representative bunch of what uh, diaspora means. Although it doesn't mean that I'm not proud that we speak so much about uh, the Armenian uh, uh, diaspora. What we're going to <clears throat> what we're going to do today is to focus as case studies on these diasporas. But on the other hand, we will also look into uh, what does it mean to be a minority, what ethnicity means, what identity means, what uh, nationalism means, and all these under the umbrella of the public space, which is a very generous one because by public space, doesn't, we don't necessarily mean just public, literally public spaces, but everything that goes from architecture to uh, law and uh, to a more philosophical type of uh, approach. It's exactly what we're doing today here, communicating with each other and exchanging ideas. Um, so your, uh, your speech came as a, a preamble to everything that is going to happen today.